How I Fell in Love with Improv, Boston I was in fourth grade and in trouble. You know, Amy, Amy, I, I really, I think that you should read this yourself. Okay, fine. Thank you, Kathleen. How I Fell in Love with Improv, Boston I was in fourth grade and in trouble. The students of Wildwood Elementary School in Burlington, Massachusetts, shifted in their uncomfortable metal seats as they waited for me to say my next line. A dog rested in my arms, and an entire musical rested on my shoulders. I was playing Dorothy in The Wizard of Oz, and it was my turn to speak. Dorothy is Hamlet for girls. Next to Annie and Annie and Sandy in Greece, it's the dream role of every ten-year-old. Annie taught me that orphanages were a blast and being rich is the only thing that matters. Greece taught me that being in a gang is nonstop fun and you need to dress sexier if you have any chance of keeping a guy interested. But the Wizard of Oz was the ultimate. It dealt with friendship and fear and death and rainbows and sparkly red shoes. Up to this moment, I had only been on stage twice. The first was for a winter pageant in second grade. I was dressed as a snowflake and had to recite a poem. The microphone was tilted too high, and so I stood on my tiptoes and fixed it. A year later, I was in a school play in the role of a singing lion. My lion's mane, a dyed string mop worn on my head, kept slipping, and I surreptitiously adjusted it mid-song. My parents would later point to these two small moments and tell me that's when they knew I would be a performer. Honestly, I don't think I had a burning desire to act at that young age. Back then, I didn't know acting was a job, really. All I knew was I liked roller skating in my driveway and making people sit and watch. I liked setting up dance contests in my basement and being the only judge. I liked attention. Attention and control. Attention, control, and it turns out laughs. In The Wizard of Oz, the part of Dorothy isn't exactly the comedic lead. She spends a lot of time listening to other people explain themselves. She's the straight man among a bunch of much juicier character parts. The Wicked Witch of the West is more dynamic. The Scarecrow has a bigger arc. Even the Lollipop Guild has a killer song. Dorothy just asks a lot of questions and is always the last to know. But I didn't care, because at the time, I was in fourth grade, which, for me, was a heavenly time to be a girl. It was all elbows and angles and possibility. I hadn't gotten my period or kissed a boy. My beloved grandfather hadn't yet died of a heart attack on my front porch on the 4th of July. I wanted to be an astronaut or a scientist or a veterinarian, and all signs pointed to my making any or all of that happen. The worst things I had encountered to this point were lice, which I'd had, scoliosis, which I didn't, and the threat of nuclear war a shadow that loomed over everything. My generation was obsessed with scoliosis. Judy Bloom dedicated an entire novel to it. It felt like at least once a month we would line up in the gym, lift our shirts, and bend over while some creepy old doctor ran his finger up and down our spines. Nuclear war was a high-concept threat, two words that often rang out in political speeches or on the 6 o'clock news. Our spines, lice, nuclear war. The big three. AIDS was just around the corner, but we didn't know it yet. The only AIDS I knew were an unfortunately named caramel diet candy my mom had in our kitchen cabinet. The anxiety-filled 80s would dovetail nicely with my hormonal teenage years, but in fourth grade, in 1980, I felt like I would live forever. I stood on stage in my blue-checked dress, Toto in my arms, and looked at the audience of parents, teachers, and students. I breathed in and I had a huge realization. I could decide right then and there what the next moment would be. I could try something new. I could go off script and give something a shot. I could say whatever I wanted.